Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on co uh, matrix computation and its application. So in the previous lecture we have discussed few examples of the vector spaces and in this uh, today also we are continue with that one. So today we are going to discuss another very important example that is set of all the matrices of order m cross n over the real because we are taking the matrices with real elements with usual addition and scalar multiplication. And we know that if we take a matrix A of order m cross n, we can write this matrix in this form where all these elements are we are assuming that is a real numbers. So in this case, we know that if I take any matrix A1 and that is also belongs to the set and another matrix A2, then we know that we can add A1 and A2 because this is also a matrix of order m cross n and that will also belongs to this one or maybe I can write this as n. So this is the way we take the addition of the matrix like suppose I have a matrix like 1, minus 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, this is a matrix, I just take A1, I take matrix A2, the same dimension I am taking. So it is 0, minus 1, 4, minus 2, 3, 9. So it is of the same order, M cross N means it is 2 cross 3, so just I am So it is 2 cross 3 and 2 cross 3. So in this case we have to take the same matrix of the same order 2 cross 3 and 2 cross 3 only then we can define this vector addition or the scalar multiplication. So now just for the convenience I can just take M and now suppose I take a M of maybe set of all 3 cross 4 matrix. So in this case our all the matrix will be always having the 3 rows and 4 columns. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, 2, 3. So this is always having the 3 rows and the 4 columns. So this is we going to define. So always having a m rows and n columns and this is the vector addition we are defining the usual addition of the matrices and also I am defining the scalar multiplication. So you know that if I take 5 a 1 then I can write this matrix as 5 minus 5 10 15 0 and 5. So this is just the multiplication 5A1 means I am multiplying the each element of the matrix by the 5 and this is also 2 cross 3. So this is the usual addition and the scalar multiplication we are taking here. So the claim is that is a vector space under usual matrix addition and scalar multiplication. So now after defining this addition and the scalar multiplication, we want to check whether it is a vector space or not. So that is my claim. So I just define, satisfy all the properties. Now suppose I take the matrix M1, M2 and M3 and adding together, then from here I can very easily check that this is always equal to M1 
m2 and m3 so the associative property is well defined in the case of matrices so this is true for all m1 m2 belongs to m that is i am defining m over the set of the matrix m cross n matrix so this is the three uh, elements i have taken and this is true for all so associative property is not the problem you can also verify from here that a1 plus a2 and just i take a3 i can add on any matrix the next one i have to define the additive identity so additive identity means that i need a element suppose i take a matrix m and i need an element e some element e is there or e plus m then i should get my m back and this should be true for all m belongs to m cross m so in this case my e is called the additive identity so now we know that for any matrix i can define e as matrix with all the element 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so the all the element 0 0 there and this is of order m cross n now from here we know that this is a matrix zero matrix of order m cross n it belongs to m n and also if i add any matrix then i am going to get the same matrix with that one so this is called my additive identity in the case of set of all m cross n matrix third one is now i will define additive inverse so additive inverse means suppose i have a matrix like a1 i have taken matrix a1 some matrix i have taken here then i can add minus a1 like we have taken and then from here you can see that you will get a zero matrix so you will get a e because here a1 is there i can take minus a1 and that will be minus 1 1 minus 2 minus 3 0 minus 1 and then this matrix is here so i call it uh, b1 b1 so a1 plus b1 will be zero matrix so that will be a zero matrix with all the elements 0 0 0 so in this case so i can say that for any matrix m there exist and minus m okay it is called additive inverse such that that will be equal to the e and this is called the additive inverse and this is true for all the uh, matrices of dimension m cross n you take any matrix i can always define the minus of that matrix and then we can add this one to the given matrix and you will get the zero matrix so this is the always satisfying the fourth one is so additive identity and then i can define that for any two matrices m1 plus m2 is equal to m2 plus m1 and this is true for all m1 m2 belongs to this one so it is a commutative so from here we can define that this is a commutative 
and so the once it is the commutative is satisfied then we can define the distributive property. So, the next one is fifth one. So, for any scalar alpha if I take m 1 plus m 2 two matrices then I can show that this is alpha m 1 plus alpha m 2 and that is true for all m 1 m 2 belongs to m and alpha belongs to the field what is the field we have taken that is a real number in this case. So, this one we can very easily verify with the properties of the matrix addition and the scalar multiplication. The fifth one then the sixth one is that how we can define alpha plus beta m 1. So, this one also very easy to verify that this will be equal to this one and for all m 1 belongs to the set and alpha belong alpha and beta belongs to field f. Seventh is the alpha beta m I choose any m here for m 1. So, this can be written as beta alpha m 1 or I can take alpha beta m 1 like this one. So, this is true also true for all and the eighth one is 1 if I take from the real number and I multiply by some vector m 1. Then we can show that this is equal to m 1 where this is true for all m 1 <coughs> So, it is true for all m 1 belongs to the set m of order n this one. So, now from here we can say that the set of all the polynomials of order m cross n with usual addition and scalar multiplication. Usual addition means the addition we used to take in the matrix and the scalar multiplication is a vector space. So, and the field I have taken over the real number. So, this is a vector space. Now, we want to define some properties of the that belongs to the vector space. So, this is just the three properties we have to keep in mind that if I take any alpha and multiply to the 0 element. So, this 0 means the 0 element in the vector space. Okay, so, this 0 means 0 vector. So, if I take any scalar multiply by 0 vector then I will get the 0 vector again for all scalars alpha and suppose I have a 0 element from the field that is the scalar multiply by any u then I will get the 0 vector here. So, u v 0 small 0 like a we are taking a field like a real number. So, in that way, real number we know the 0 is there. So, if I take u 0 and taking the u then it will be the 0 element of the vector space and minus 1 u will be equal to minus u for every u belongs to the v. So, these three properties we have to keep in mind. For example, just now we have taken the matrices of order m cross n under addition and multiplication over the real line. So, in this case if I take any scalar and I know that 0 element is a 0 matrix. So, it is a 0 matrix. So, I know that 0 matrix was is this one 0 0 0 0 
all are 0. So, m cross n, a zero matrix n. So, alpha if I take any alpha into 0, then definitely I am taking alpha and then multiplying this matrix and that will be again the 0 matrix. So, this is a true, always true in the case of vector spaces. So, this is the first property we can verify. The second one is if I take the 0 element, so 0 belongs to the field R and if I take any matrix uh, from the M n, then we know that a 0 multiply by the matrix, some matrix A, then I will multiply all the element with the 0, 0 into A 1 1, 0 A 1 n, something like this. So, all the coefficient will be 0. So, this will become the 0 matrix. So, this is just, I just write 0 and this 0 is coming from the uh, field that is a scalar and I am writing this vector because it is a 0 matrix. So, that is true for all elements uh, A belongs to the, where A belongs to M n. Okay. So, this is the second one and the third one is minus 1 into A definitely I am going to multiply each element with the minus sign minus a m 1 minus a m n and that is equal to minus a. So, this is also true for all elements a belongs to this one and this minus 1 is coming from the field belongs to the my field. So, if this is there then it is satisfying always. So, if it is vector space then this is always true because sometime we need to define the inverse. So, this way we can define the inverse or the 0 element we want to find out. So, this is the way we can find out the 0 element. So, these three properties are always there if we have a vector space. Now, so after doing this usual addition and scalar multiplication, I want to give you one example that is completely different from what we have done uh, till now. So, let us take this example. Let I take the R plus set of all the positive real numbers. So, set of all the positive real numbers. Define the operations of addition and scalar multiplication as follow. So, this is my vector addition I am defining for all u and v belongs to R plus. And scalar multiplication I am defining alpha into u is equal to u raised to power alpha. See, here I am defining u plus v that is a vector addition. So, that I am defining that is equal to u into v for r u and v belongs to r plus. And this one I am defining alpha u is equal to u alpha for all u belongs to r plus and a real scalar alpha. It means I am defining this one, this is a set of vectors defining over the whole real line with this addition and with this scalar multiplication. And I want to check that is a vector space or not. So, this one I want to define r plus you know that all the positive real numbers. <coughs> so, let us try to find out. So, the first property we are defining and this is a well defined. So, no problem because u plus v is equal to u into v and is well defined. u is coming from r plus, v is coming from r plus. So, definitely u into v that is also coming from r plus. It cannot be 0 or negative. So, it is definitely if you take any real number positive real number multiply two positive real number that will definitely belongs to the real number positive real number. So, this and alpha u is u alpha. So, now if I take any positive real number and taking the power any power alpha 
where alpha is any real number then this is also belongs to R plus always. Okay, so, this is, is we are taking this one and this is well defined. So, it is a well defined binary operation addition and scalar multiplication. Now, we want to check whether it is a vector space or not. So, let us satisfy the first property that is u plus v plus w and this one I take like this one. Now, u plus v plus w. So, I am applying the first vector addition here and then the whole. So, u plus v will be u into v plus w and then from here it will be u into v and then I am applying w. Now, it is a just belongs to r plus. So, it is a just a positive real number. So, from here I can write this as u into v into w and then it will be u plus v w and then it becomes u plus v plus w. Okay. So, the from here I can say that this is true for all u v w belongs to r plus. So, the property is satisfied. So, it is associative. So, this associative property is defined in this case. The second one is I am just uh, taking the additive additive identity. So, in this case for any u belongs to r plus there exist if there exist an element if there exist an element e such that u plus e should be u okay so for any u belongs to this if there exist an element E such that this property is satisfying, then we call it E as a additive identity. So, now in this case, what we have to find out? Now, see u plus e is u e by the addition, and that should be equal to u. Now, u belongs to positive real number, right? E also going to a positive real number if it exists there. Then from here and u is of course, u is not equal to 0 because I am taking all the positive real numbers. So, from here we can say that E is equal to 1 because u into E is equal to u and that is always positive real numbers. Then from here E is 1. So, from here I can say that this is my additive identity. So, till now we have seen the additive identity is a 0 element, but first time we are able to see that in this case the additive identity is 1 and 1 belongs to the uh, R plus. So, it means that additive identity exists in the given uh, space that is R plus. Third one is additive inverse. So, for the additiveness for any u belongs to the set, if there exist, if there exist an element, we call it v belongs to R plus such that u plus v is equal to E, then we call v as a additive inverse. So, now from here we know that u plus v and E is 1 and u plus v is u into v is equal to 1. So, from here now you know that 
neither u nor v uh, are 0 because it is r plus. So, from here I can take my v is 1 over u and this is the additive inverse of u. So, for any u I can find the additive inverse 1 by u and that also belongs to r plus because if you take any positive number and take its inverse 1 by u that also belongs to r plus. So, in this case this is my additive identity or additive inverse sorry in this case. So, now from here we are able to see that it can also be additive inverse instead of minus of that number that we have seen in the previous example. So, after doing this one the fourth property is commutative. So, commutative now u plus v I am taking. So, this is equal to u into v that is there and this is a just multiplication of two positive real numbers. So, I can write this as a v u also and this one I can write v plus u by the uh, definition and this is true for all u and v belongs to the set R plus. So, satisfying. So, this property is satisfying. So, it is a commutative under the defined addition. <coughs> Now, it satisfy all the properties. So, the fifth property I just want to see the distributive property. So, alpha uh, u plus v. Now, I want to take the help of scalar multiplication and vector addition. So, let us see that what is going to happen in this case. Now, <coughs> alpha is a scalar and this is a vector. So, I can write this alpha and u plus v I know that this is u v. And now, if alpha is multiplying the to the vector, then if you see from here, then this is the scalar multiplication. So, I have to take the scalar multiplication here u into v power alpha. And now, this is equal to, so this is just the multiplication of two positive real number raised to power alpha, then I know that from the algebra that I can write it is u alpha and v alpha. And then from here I can write this as u alpha plus v alpha, right. So, this one I can write from here and now I can write from here alpha u plus alpha v. So, this one is true and from here this is I got from here. So, this is from here I can say that this is true for all u and v belongs to R plus and alpha belongs to R. So, it is a distributive property is satisfying. The sixth one is again the distributive property. So, alpha plus beta u and I can write this as by the scalar multiplication it becomes u alpha plus beta and this is again u alpha into u beta and again I can write this as a u alpha plus u beta by this vector addition and this becomes alpha u plus beta u. So, this is true for all u belongs to R plus and alpha beta belongs to real number R. So, this is satisfying the seventh one is alpha beta u and this one I can represent that this will become u alpha beta and it can be written as u beta alpha no problem we can write this as also. And from here you can see that I can write this as a beta alpha u just we can write this as. So, this is also true for all 
u belongs to r plus and alpha beta belongs to r and the eighth one is now my eighth property 1 into u. Now, 1 is a real number that is coming from the field into u. So, by the scalar multiplication u it will become u into 1 because it is just a scalar and u raised to power 1 is always u for any positive real number. So, this belongs to r plus and this is true for all this one. So, true for all u belongs to r plus now, so this property is also satisfied. So, from here we can say that all the properties are satisfying and then R plus defined on the field R with given addition and scalar multiplication is a vector space. So, we will stop here. So, today we have discussed two more example based on vector spaces. First one is the set of all the matrices of order m cross n and the another example was that in which we are defining the vector addition and the scalar multiplication in the different way. So, in the next lecture we will continue with this one and thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much.